All right, that music means you know this is cool. A space. <laughs> successful <laughs> relocation mission happened in outer space just this morning. I'm into this. Obviously, an American astronaut and Russian cosmonauts worked together to transfer a Soyuz air spacecraft from one international space station port to another really quite a ballet. The Russian mm. craft orbited part of the Earth before docking at a new location. This move opens up a route for a series of upcoming Russian spacewalks. Now, for all things space, we are lucky enough to be joined by George Dvorsky. He is a deputy editor for Gizmodo. Hey there, George. So um, tell us more, especially in this time where here on Earth, there's all this fighting between uh, Russia and, and the rest of the world, particularly tensions being high between uh, Russia and U.S. But in this case, out in space, collaboration between these Russian cosmonauts and a NASA astronaut at the International Space Station. Tell us a little bit more about what it means and, and how easily these two groups work together. And this is exactly right. I mean, tensions on the ground are so bad right now, and you'd think that that would translate up there in low Earth orbit, but thankfully it's not. And uh, NASA and Roscosmos, they've been finding ways to work together, finding ways to cooperate up there and make sure that operations continue such that everyone is safe, such that the science can continue up there. And today was a good example of that. The the Soyuz spacecraft needed to move from one, one port to another to free up uh, the port for a cargo craft that's coming later this year. And the Russians have a spacewalk planned in both April and May, so this makes that possible as well. So um, it hasn't always been this way, though. In the last couple of years, uh, it has been there has been some tremendous tension between uh, the United States and Russia when it comes to the space program. Sure. Um, and, but things are changing. Sorry. I, I'm agreeing with you. I mean, historically, the space race was all about those tensions. Absolutely. I mean, it, to me, it's remarkable that over the 25 years of the, the space station alone, and even even going uh, before that, that they managed to work so cooperatively cooperatively up there. But as of a couple of years ago, even you had the space, uh, the Roscosmos chief um, uh, Rogozin threatened to leave the ISS. Really blustery character. Um, suddenly, it really changed. It even threatened. There was even a, a, an inflammatory video that seemed to suggest that they were going to abandon NASA astronauts. So he'd never seen this before. Um, but he got canned, and he got replaced by a kinder, gentler soul, so to speak. Uh, his name is Yuri Borisov, and he has stressed this wanting to have this professional relationship um, with NASA. And uh, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, Nelson has said likewise. They're looking for a professional relationship with Roscosmos, and perhaps today we're starting to see signs of that. And you know, there's not too many years left in the ISS. It's, it's scheduled for retirement in 2030. So hopefully between now and then, we can continue to have these kinds of smooth operations in low Earth orbit. You know, it's possible in space, apparently. There's another headline we want to ask you about. NASA has named the astronauts who will be traveling around the moon on the Artemis II mission this week. They made that announcement. And it's interesting because they've kind of been on a media tour. Yeah. Um, you know, people are really like marveling at who will be, you know, these new space heroes. What can you tell us about these astronauts and how they're preparing for next year's journey? And it's an extraordinary list of astronauts. These are going to be four historic figures. They are the four first Artemis astronauts, the four first astronauts who will venture to the lunar environment since the Apollo program. You've got Reed Wiseman. He's going to be the pot. He's going to be the commander. Uh, super experienced. Uh, he's spent half a year in the ISS. You've got Victor Glover. Um, again, he's going to be the pilot. Lots of experience in space. Has performed multiple spacewalks. He will be the first person of color to venture beyond Earth orbit to be in that lunar environment. And, and again, just a reminder, there won't be a landing, but they will go around the moon and come back. This will be in preparation for Artemis III, which is in 2025 or so. Um, you have Christina Koch. Um, again, remarkable amount of experience. She holds the record at 328 days for women long duration uh, stints in space. Um, and then you've got what's remarkable for me as a Canadian, we have uh, Jeremy Hansen, who will be the first non-American uh, to venture past uh, Earth orbit. So a lot of firsts are set to happen with Artemis II, which is hopefully it's scheduled for November of 2024. All right, Very George Nagorski, cool. thank you so much. Thank you, George. My pleasure.